Hello everyone. Uh, in the last session, we have seen the concept of stress strain, uh, types of stress, and the behavior of materials under tensile and uh, compressive stress. So, if you haven't watched that video yet, uh, pause this one and go back to the previous one for understanding the concept. So, here we are going to see the problems based on tensile and compressive stress. So, let's get started. In this question, a circular bar or road is considered under a tensile load. The diameter length load and the Young's modulus are given. Uh, we have to find out the stress, strain and elongation of the bar. So here we can simply use the formulas to get the values. That is a stress equals load by area. Since it is a circular bar, area will be pi r square or pi by 4 d square. Substituting the values of dia as 20 mm and load as 30,000 newton or 30 kilonewton, we will get the stress value as 95.493 newton per mm square. So here uh, unity is very important. So substitute the force in newton and the area in meter square or mm square. Strain or rate of change of deformation has different formulas like change in length by original length or stress by Young's modulus. Here Young's modulus is given and stress is already calculated. So we can directly find the value of strain. Uh, formula is chosen as per the given data actually. And uh, we know the strain has no unit. And also elongation is uh, strain times length. And we will get the value in mm or meter. In the next question, a steel rod is considered subjected to an axial pull force. We have to find the elongation of the rod. Here also diameter, length, load and Young's modulus are given. We know the deformation or elongation is load times length by area times Young's modulus that is PL by AE. And like the previous one it is a circular bar so area of cross section is pi by 4 d square and diameter is 25 mm. So area can be calculated. Substituting the area in the elongation formula along with the load length and Young's modulus give the answer as 0.1455 mm. In the next one, a wooden block or column is considered subjected to a compressive force because uh, you know we can uh, see from the question the column is found to be shortened by 1.5 mm under the load. So sometimes uh, from the question we have to understand whether it is compressive or tensile force. So here uh, we have to find the stress and strain value for that uh, load dimension uh, of the block and the deformation are uh, given and since it is a rectangular block the area of cross section is breadth times depth so directly load by area gives stress and the change in length by original length gives strain okay now uh, in this fourth question we have a brass tube like a hollow pipe which is subjected to a compressive force. Here we have to find out the value of Young's modulus. Uh, you know a hollow cylindrical tube will be having two diameters which are given here along with the length uh, deformation and the load. So the Young's modulus can be calculated from the deformation formula that is uh, delta L equals PL by AE or uh, E equals PL by A delta L and uh, the area can be calculated from the formula uh, area equal to outside diameter outside area minus inside area since it is a hollow tube so that is a pi by 4 uh, D1 square minus D2 square. Now substituting that value of area along with the load length and deformation gives the Young's modulus. The next question here is somewhat tricky uh, but actually it is also very very easy but we have to consider two different sections of different cross sectional area. So unlike the previous problem here we have uh, the material which is having different cross section. So uh, here plunger and the rod setup of a hydraulic lift is considered where which you know the pressure force of the fo fluid is exerted. We have to find out the change in length of the rod. 
So here the pressure of force of 8 Newton per mm square is exerted on the plunger. And we have to understand that stress exerted on the plunger is different from stress exerted on the rod. Even though the force which creates the stress is common and same. That's because the area of cross section is different. We know that pressure equal to load divided by area. So if the area changes, pressure or stress changes. So all the data like length, diameters, pressure and uh, Young's modulus are given. Now the change in length of the rod equal to load times the length of the rod divided by area of the uh, rod times the uh, Young's modulus. So the circular area of cross section of the rod equal to pi by 4 small d square very small letter d is the diameter of the rod but we have to calculate the load first we don't know the load here only pressure force is given so pressure is exerted on the plunger side so uh, pressure equal to load by area of cross section of the plunger so from that we can uh, calculate the load that is equal to pressure multiplied by area of cross section of the plunger that is equal to 8 multiplied by pi by 4 into uh, 100 square so here uh, the load value is 62831.853 newton so then uh, we can calculate the change in length or deformation uh, but that is equal to low pl by are so uh, which uh, while uh, substituting the load length and area of cross section of the rod and e we will get uh, delta e delta l equal to 0 0.469 mm next we have a cement concrete cube of 150 mm size which crushes at a load of 337.5 kN. here we have to find out the working stress if the factor of safety is 3 we know that factor of safety is the ratio of uh, ultimate stress to the working stress uh, so here we are the crushing load or otherwise ultimate load is given so ultimate stress can be calculated that is equal to crushing load by area of cross section and uh, uh, since it is a cube area of cross section will be equal to uh, a square or uh, uh, side length square so substituting the values of uh, load and uh, area we will get this st uh, ultimate stress as 15 newton per mm square and uh, the uh, working stress will be equal to ultimate stress by factor of safety that is equal to 5 newton per mm square next we have a cast iron column which is having a shape of a cylindrical tube or pipe it has an ultimate stress of 480 newton per mm square and factor of safety is 3 we have to find out the load uh, here so the external diameter and thickness of the column is given now we can calculate the working stress which will be equal to ultimate stress by factor of safety that is equal to 480 by 3 that is 160 newton per mm square now working stress is also having a formula that if uh, that is uh, load by area so the load can be calculated that is uh, load equal to working stress times area area of cross section of the uh, column now we have to find out the area of cross section of the column that is equal to the difference between the area of larger circle minus smaller one that is equal to pi by 4 into uh, capital D square minus small d square where uh, capital D is the larger diameter and small d is the small diameter so uh, here uh, we know the value of uh, larger diameter but uh, the thickness of the column is given so we can find out the value of uh, small diameter uh, so uh, we can find the value of area of cross section that is equal to uh, 17671.459 mm square now uh, from that we can find out the value of load which will be equal to 160 times a area that is 160 is the working stress so that is equal to uh, 2827433.44 newton or otherwise 2827.4 kilonewton next we have a steel column subjected to an axial load 
this question is similar to the previous one we have to find out the value of internal diameter of the column here the ultimate stress load external diameter and the factor of safety are given the working stress is having the formula uh, that is equal to ultimate stress by factor of safety here uh, by substituting we will get 120 a newton per mm square now uh, the working stress equal to load by area so area uh, can be calculated like that is equal to uh, load by working stress equal to 16,666.66 mm square now uh, we know that the area of cross section equal to pi by 4 into uh, the larger diameter square minus smaller diameter square so while substituting the value of area here we will get uh, the diameter value uh, that is equal to the small diameter uh, that is equal to 137.038 mm in the next question uh, different data regarding the tensile testing of a mild steel specimen are given we have to find out the yield stress ultimate stress nominal stress at fracture uh, percentage of elongation and percentage of reduction in area so uh, they have given the diameter and length of the specimen before and after the tensile testing also the diameter of the specimen and the diameter of the neck are given so we can calculate the cross-sectional area of the specimen and uh, the neck so here the uh, yield stress is the ratio of a load at the yield point to the uh, original area of the specimen ultimate stress is the ratio of maximum load to the original area uh, and the low, uh, the stress at the fracture is the ra ratio of uh, load at the fracture to the original area so here we can calculate the value of uh, percentage of elongation by the formula L0 minus L by L into 100 where L0 is the uh, length after fracture and L is the length before testing so uh, we can calculate the percentage of uh, reduction of area by means of the formula A minus A0 by A uh, multiplied by 100 here area A0 is the area of cross section uh, after fracture or area of cross section of the neck and uh, A is the area of cross section of the specimen uh, so we can uh, directly substitute the uh, given data to determine the uh, following quantities in the next problem we consider a stepper bar of 1 meter length which has two segments here two cross sections has 20 by 20 and 40 by 40 dimensions the maximum tensile stress Young's modulus and length of the two segments are also given here uh, we have to calculate the elongation of the bar since it is a bar of varying cross section total elongation is equal to delta L equal to PL1 by A1E plus PL2 by A2E the maximum tensile stress is also given here uh, and uh, the maximum tensile stress is, is created at the section which is having less cross-sectional area so at the first section which is having less cross-sectional area uh, the stress P1 will be maximum so uh, P1 equal to load by area so load can be calculated uh, that is load equal to P1 A1 uh, that is equal to 200 times 400 equal to 80,000 Newton substituting the values of load length L1 and L2 area A1 A2 and the Young's modulus uh, we will we can finally get the value uh, elongation equal to 0.625 mm in next one we have a steel bar of 450 mm long two ends are having equal length subjected to uh, tensile load here we have to determine the length and diameter of the middle portion when total length diameter of two end portions total load stress at the middle portion total elongation and Young's modulus are given stress at the middle portion is given which is equal to load by area at that portion from that we can calculate the area of cross section of the middle portion and from the area uh, we can find out the diameter of the middle portion and here it is equal to 10.92 mm 
area of cross section of the two ends are same since the diameters are same so a1 will be equal to a3 will be uh, that is equal to 176.715 mm square for finding out the length of the middle portion uh, let's consider uh, the length of the section uh, two end sections uh, of the road as x now since the total distance is 450 mm the di distance of uh, middle portion is equal to 450 minus 2x we know that the elongation of uh, road ha having varying cross section and the same material is delta l equal to p by e into l1 by a1 plus l2 by a2 plus l3 by a3 by substituting the values of delta L load Young's modulus area and giving the va uh, values of L1, L3 as x and L2 as 450 minus 2x uh, and uh, simplifying the equations we will finally get the value of x as 146.437 mm now we have to find out the value of uh, length of the middle portion that is equal to L2 equal to 450 minus 2x uh, so that is equal to 157.126 mm so thank you for watching and let's catch up in next video